to the EEPROM 9. Now, you may notice there's only the tripod mount for the viewfinder here. That's because it's currently sitting over this way on top of my logbook. And so it's time for a teardown. I have run testy on this and it is geared, so it'll be quite interesting in the teardown to see if we can find what's wrong. It'll have to be obvious problems because while I have the equipment to do troubleshooting, I don't have the equipment to do repairs on me here at uni, so repairs will have to wait till the summer and anyway, troubleshooting and repairs take a long time. But here's the subject of today's teardown. It's viewfinder with added awesomeness that increases the awesomeness of the camera by ten times. Telescopic sight that reminds me very much of a Dalek gun. <coughs> And that is utter awesomeness. So it is an Olympus camera and it's made in December of 1983. So this camera is as old as the Electron, basically. Huh. What do you know? 30th birthday next year here at December. We've got focus and brightness adjustments and it's an electronic viewfinder VF KF3E. I'm going to type that into Google. Now the funny thing is with these, is these viewfinders go for a lot of money. But you can pick up these cameras for dirt cheap. And these cameras are pretty plentiful on eBay. And in fact your media department at school and that, they're a good source for picking up old VHS camcorders and that. And car boot sales as Mr VX spotted out. So here we have the viewfinder. Now, I don't know how many of you have looked at my website, so you might be surprised to see the display technology in use. But here's a hint. Look at the face. So, and the viewfinder is big enough to cover the entire lens of the main camera. So, let's get started. First, we want to doesn't seem to rely on clips, thank god, too many bloody of these things rely on clips to hold them together. Can I get away with using this screwdriver? Yeah, I can. I don't have to set up the other bigger one, which is more appropriate for this screw. Come on. I don't, I don't let me do things the lazy way for once. There we go, if I just pop that screw over there. And that one. And here's an interesting note, Photo Induction has reopened another channel. And then we go there, and then we undo the next screws we want to remove. So we want to remove just the top unit, so, because we want to reveal the magic inside. Now I don't know how many of you will be surprised at this, but the first time that I saw it, I was surprised. Come on. Well, not on this particular camera, but ever. There we go. I don't have to remove that screw when I have. I wonder why it's so tight. And I have actually had this opened up before because I've been in here before. So we unscrew that. Do that like that. Hold things together. And scratch my nose. And just move that like that. And voila! These use miniature CRTs. I want to take the camera off the tripod and get a closer look in. My halogen desk lamp's died, so we won't be using that sort of just... Oh, that's horrible. Focus, god damn you. But anyway, what we have here is CRTs. Now when I was little, I used to think every, every type of display that displayed images like a television was CRT. And I actually used to think that there was a CRT inside these viewfinders in my dad's video camera. But as I got older and more into electronics, I thought, nah, that's impossible. Then I dismantled one of these for the first time and discovered it was CRT. This is getting back a good few years ago now, and I was quite pleasantly surprised. Now, 
Any of you who have done television work or anything like that will know this sort of television-y layout. The chips will be, the driver chips will be mounted to the bottom. But here we have your standard CRT layout. You have your flyback transformer, which is here, this thing, with part number and other gumph on it I don't understand. You have the deflection yoke, the to deflect the electron beam over the face of front of you. Part of the CRT you can actually see there. Here you have the flyback plug, which is like a sucker, like you used to hang up Christmas lights on the window at Christmas, but only it's not. It doesn't actually form a vacuum normally. And the flyback lead goes all the way down to here. Watch out, these are dangerous. These hold kilovolts. And a big television can be 15 to 20... A smaller CRT can be 15 kV and up to 25 kV and more. That's the average, like, normal size television rating to large CRT. And these little ones are in the, like, 1, 2, 3 kilovolts. This one, you can actually see the inside coating of the tube which is quite interesting and rare to see and it's a square tube now we go down here and under here is all the fixed focusing magnets and then of course we get to the plug and all the electron gun will be in the tube under here and then of course we have the wires which go off the television engineers will know what each one of those does and there's another high voltage lead which will lead to an internal anode most likely because there's also an anode plug on the end there's also anode parts in the electron gun basically here you have your mi telescopic microphone assembly nice simple foamed up let's get some light in there so you can see the connectors uh, yeah it's better holding it at a distance so it actually lights up rather than oversaturates the CCD. And of course we have some more adjustments and I just poke the camera with the screwdriver. But it was the size of the lens barrel and not the actual lens and that is, God knows, here we go, R revision... Is that for revision? I don't know. Head reference, I do not know. On v VR... Don't ask me what this is, VR variable resistor on six on not sure what that's about you can't see that and stuff like that can we see any date codes on the caps made in japan so it's decent and here we have an induction coil which is some weird value imprinted on the induction coil i don't understand induction coils i see oh god I We've really been going for eight minutes. How the hell did that happen? Oh well, eight minutes. We're just getting into the Jesus. Think how long it takes for the other part. And then of course there's LEDs mounted under the CRT for REC and that. I'm not dismantling this part because I can't be asked. Then you got your recorder LED and that loveliness. But yeah, these old ones from the 80s to the 90s and earlier. You CRTs. And these are very hackable. If this camera, if I can't get this camera up and running, this will be taken to just be for uh, another CRT viewfinder hack where I link in random video signals and turn it into a miniature video monitor because that's always an interesting thing to do. Now I move the camera out of the way and reassemble the device. If we can get it running, we'll just use it with the camera. Now these things obviously cost new god knows a lot. There's a big thick brown wire which is probably a power and a load of other smaller auxiliary lines which will be video and controlling the REC LEDs and all that loveliness. Like in the old Sony that I have. There we go, it's beautiful. Then you screw that back on. And you screw the screws back in. But there
better to look inside a CRT viewfinder. And when ones with these cables, you don't even need to open them. And literally, all you need to do to find the power is hook 9 volt, probably best 6 volt battery until you get something up on the screen. Seriously, put the voltage down the wrong line, does not damage them. I've done it with two now and it hasn't damaged either of them at any point. The word of warning though, you're if you open them and you are dealing with CRTs and while not fatal, because I actually got zapped by one, it's unpleasant, so be careful. And if you have a pacemaker, it probably is fatal. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a fatal shock, but remember, current is relative to voltage, and all it takes is the right shock to get silly 6 milliamps through the heart, and you're dead. Stone dead. So even around small little devices like this, be careful, because there is a chance, even if it's not necessarily huge, that you can kill yourself. But if you're inclined on messing around with CRT technology, I'd recommend starting off on these because they are less likely to kill you. In fact, I wouldn't rule it out as being impossible because I've got no scientific evidence to back that up.